US, bond yields rose sharply again overnight to fresh 16-year highs. All about the higher for longer story for US interest rates. And US factory activity contracted less than expected. That's coming up in our five things in five minutes. And then in our bonus deep dive interview, we hear from ANZ's head of G3 Economics, Brian Martin, about this big sell-off in the world's most important interest rate, the 10-year Treasury bond yield. Monetary conditions in the economy are tightening. Bond yields have risen. Equity markets have fallen. The dollar has strengthened. And in many ways, that's exactly what the FOMC want to achieve. But first, in 5 and 5 with ANZ, number one, US bond markets sold off again overnight. The US 10-year Treasury bond yield rose 12 basis points to be around 4.69% in late US trade. It's all about the higher for longer story for US interest rates. These higher interest rates also drove US stocks and European stocks down as much as 1% overnight. They also strengthened the US dollar against the Australian dollar. It fell to 63.7 US cents from 64.3 cents last night. The Kiwi dollar also fell to 59.5 US cents from just over 60 cents last night. Number two, the other big casualty in the last 24 hours has been the yen, with plenty of talk and action from Japanese authorities to bolster Japan's currency and push up the key Japanese 10-year JGB yield. By about 5 o'clock Australian time, the yen was touching 149.9 to the dollar. That's almost at the key 150 level seen as a potential intervention trigger point. Yesterday, Japan's finance minister, Shinichi Suzuki, said the government was watching the yen's fall with a, quote, strong sense of urgency, unquote. The Bank of Japan also announced it would be buying JGBs to contain a rise in the 10-year yield. It firmed yesterday to a 10-year high of 0.77%, and it's just on 0.76% in Asian morning trade. Number three. Now, one factor encouraging the hawks is the resilience of the US economy, which was again evident overnight. The ISM index for factory activity in September rose to 49 points. Now, that's still contracting because it was below 50, but it was an improvement from the 47.6 we saw in August and higher than the consensus forecasts for around 48. Here's ANZ's head of G3 Economics, Brian Martin. The index rose to its highest level in 10 months, uh, but encouragingly, employment was up, not massively above 50, but above 50, suggesting firms are still hiring. Uh, New orders were up, which would imply that future output from the factory sector is going to be stronger. And in an environment where the United Auto Workers are out on strike, and that's broadening, to get a report like that was really encouraging. It does suggest that potentially now the worst for the manufacturing sector is over. Number four, now in European data out overnight, there was good inflation news with core inflation up 0.2% in September. And there was a manufacturing survey showing the European economy slowing down nicely. Here's Brian again. That's the fifth month that it has averaged 0.2%. There's clearly an improvement taking place. The economy is slowing down. Uh, We saw that in the final PMI data for the manufacturing sector for September today. And I think all that is consistent with the ECB now being able to really focus on the duration for how long interest rates have to stay high rather than raising interest rates again. Number five, consumer price inflation eased sharply in Indonesia in September, but this was largely expected and due to rice inflation. That's according to ANZ's economist for Asia, Crystal Tan. The thing is, the rise in food prices has mainly been driven by just rice rather than a broader basket. And in Indonesia's case, the pass-through from the rise in global oil prices is going to be quite limited thanks to fuel subsidies. So overall, Indonesia's inflation is still going to remain comfortably within the central bank's target band. ANZ's Crystal Tan there. Now it's time for our bonus deep dive interview. This time a fresh one with Brian Martin this morning on just what's going on with global bond yields. The US 10-year is the base, and it's up 50 basis points in a month to a 16-year high. It hit 4.71% overnight. I asked him, what's going on? 
I think the market's realising that we're in a completely different environment now than we were in the aftermath of the GFC and indeed during the pandemic. The economy requires higher real and positive levels of real interest rates. And that's coming through loud and clear in the FOMC's projected dot plot. It forecasts that at the end of this year, the real policy rate will be 1.9%. And over the course of 2024, they expect that to rise to 2.5%. So they're really signalling that certainly for the foreseeable future, uh, they're going to keep a very tight and restrictive grip of monetary policy. And I believe that is feeding through to the bond market. And we are hearing from Fed speakers now um, quite hawkish comments. Could you talk about what we've heard in the last few days there? Well, they're signalling that they're prepared to raise interest rates again if they need to. My sense about the FOMC is that they are now very focused on the real policy rate because that is what matters for the real economy, for jobs, for firms, households over time. They have signalled that they expect inflation to ease towards 3.7%. That's the core PCE measure, their favourite measure of inflation, by the end of this year. My understanding is that if the data deviates from that, and were to signal that inflation is actually going to be higher uh, than the FOMC's forecasts anticipate, uh, then the FOMC will raise interest rates again. They're very determined to ensure that inflation gets back on a sustainable path to target. And what are the risks here that the rise in the 10-year yield and uh, 30-year yield could push the US economy, uh, not just the housing market, but also um, business um, closer to a recession? Well, recession isn't part of the FOMC's profile. When you look at their GDP forecasts, when you look at the unemployment rate forecasts, It doesn't seem to me that there is a baseline recession view at the FOMC at present. However, you correctly point out monetary conditions in the economy are tightening. Bond yields have risen. Equity markets have fallen. The dollar has strengthened. And in many ways, that's exactly what the FOMC want to achieve. They affect inflation and real economic activity uh, through restricting demand. And as the dollar strengthens, that bears down on inflation pressures. As bond yields rise, that makes it more expensive for firms to finance or to refinance. And as the equity market falls, that not only affects household balance sheets, but it raises the cost of capital for firms, which should effectively reduce demand. So on all those measures, I think the FOMC is probably quite happy with what's going on in the markets because it's going to shore up what they're trying to achieve. Ryan also points out how both the tight monetary policy in the United States and the loose fiscal policy in the United States is boosting the US dollar and adding to the effects on global markets and the global economy. When you look at the infrastructure bill, climate spending, uh, what's going on in terms of subsidising health insurance, all these kind of things, fiscal policy is expansionary. So a tight monetary policy and expansionary fiscal policy are very positive for a currency, and that's exactly what the dollar is experiencing at the moment. By contrast, everywhere else, monetary policy seems to be relatively loose. I'm Bernard Hickey. That was 5 and 5 with ANZ for Tuesday, October the 3rd. Catch you tomorrow with the latest from today's RBA decision and a preview of tomorrow's RBNZ decision. This podcast contains general information only, not investment advice. You should obtain advice for your personal circumstances before making any investment decisions. Please view the podcast disclaimer available via your media player or email.